Hey everyone, in this video we're going to begin our discussion of the theory of linear algebra. We're going to start by defining uh, vectors uh, in an n-dimensional space. So a vector and the notation we'll use for vectors uh, we can use letters like x or y or z and I'll put an x with an arrow on top of it. So a vector x, uh, sometimes called an n-dimensional vector, so or n dimensional vector or simply an n vector is an ordered n tuple of numbers so is an ordered n tuple of numbers so it's an ordered n tuple of numbers um, for our purposes, uh, the numbers will be real numbers, so the entries in the vector are real numbers. So let me show you what a vector looks like. So one way to write a vector is horizontally, so we use a bracket. Then here we have x1, this is called the first component or the first entry. This will be a real number for our purposes. Then x2, etc. So we don't know what the next one is. Well, we know it's x3, but when do we stop? Well, we have to stop at x sub n, so what we do is we put three dots and that shows uh, to the reader that there's stuff missing between x2 and x sub n. Uh, when it's written horizontally like this it's called a row vector. So this is a row vector. Another way to write uh, a vector is vertically. So when we do that it looks something like this. This is the first component or entry, the second component or entry, dot dot dot, and then here we have the nth component or entry. Um, this is called a column vector, so column vector. So which one we use just depends on what we're doing, uh, on clarity. Typically you want to use the one um, that makes more sense uh, to the reader. Right? That's what you want to do. Um, if you look at the set of all of these vectors, it's defined to be Rn. So here R is the set of real numbers. So this is n copies of R. So you end up with the set of all n-dimensional vectors. So this is the first component, dot, 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 nth component, such that, and then all of our entries here are uh, real numbers. Okay, they're all real numbers. So this is the set Rn, the set of all n-dimensional vectors. Okay. Um, notice it says ordered in the definition. Um, so that would mean um, that if you had something like 1, 3, that's not the same um, as the vector uh, 3, 1. These are different uh, vectors, right? So all of the entries uh, have to be the same. Let's look at an example of graphing a vector uh, in R2. So in R2, let me switch colors here. Well, first, let's look at 1. So if n is 1, let's look at that case first. You just get r1, so you get r. So in this case, um, every one-dimensional vector can be thought of as a real number. So you just get uh, the set of real numbers. If n is 2, if n is 2, you get r2, or r squared. Right? This is the set of all two-dimensional vectors in the plane. So they look like this, uh, x1, x2 such that uh, x1 and x2 are real numbers. So this is all the vectors in the plane. Let's go ahead and graph one so you see uh, what it looks like. So this is the y-axis, this is the uh, x-axis, and then I'll draw my pet vector with initial point at the origin, so this is called the initial point. Just some extra terminology, initial point. And then this here is the, called the terminal point. So terminal, terminal point. So our vector starts here and goes all the way this way. So it has a magnitude. That's the length. The length is called the magnitude. And it has a direction. This angle here, that would be the direction. So the terminal point here would be x1, uh, comma, x, x2. When a vector is written in this way, uh, it's, it's said to be in what's called standard position. I'm not really going to be using this, uh, but just I figured I'd 
I'd let you know, right? It doesn't hurt to learn uh, extra stuff. <laughs> uh, so a vector that's written with initial point at the origin is said to be in standard uh, position. Notice we can move the vector around in the plane and we have the same vector. So typically we're allowed to do that. We can, we can put it in different places and we consider it still to be the same vector. It's just when it's written this way, we say it's in standard uh, position. You can add vectors geometrically. Uh, let me attempt to show you how um, using something called the parallelogram um, law. So let me let me show you how that works. So this is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. Okay, and let's say we have two vectors. Um, let me use green for x. So x is our vector uh, x1, x2, and then um, y is our vector uh, y1, uh, y2. Okay, so let's attempt to add these um, geometrically. So maybe um, x, this has terminal point x1, x2, and I'll draw it in standard position, so the initial point is at the origin. Beautiful picture. <laughs> there is our vector x. Let me use a different color for y. Let me go to yellow. And let's say y is down here. So this is y. And this would be the terminal point uh, y1, comma, y2. So then what you do is you draw y up here, like this. okay? And then you go back and you connect these dots and you draw x here. So x is green, y is yellow. And then what you do, this is the cool part, is you connect these. Right? You have a parallelogram and you connect these. And this terminal point here would be x1 okay, plus y1 comma x2 plus y2. Okay? And um, that's it, right? This would be the vector, this red vector here would be the sum of the vectors x plus y. So we can define it formally if we have x plus y, adding the vectors, uh, we just have x1, x2, plus, and then we have y1, y2, and then we just add the entries or components. Remember, the numbers are called entries or components, so you get x1 plus y1, and then x2 plus uh, y2. So that's how you add two vectors, you just add the components. I just wanted to show you how to do it uh, graphically, how it's done with what's called the para Lelogram uh, law, just extra, extra life uh, knowledge. So given two vectors in Rn, you add them the same way. So um, just a, a, a recap. So given, just to be really formal. So given two vectors, so given x, x1 to xn, and y, so y1, and I wasn't going to write it, but again, I'm trying to go over all of the theory in these videos, like everything, right? A, a full, solid course, everything you need to know about uh, linear algebra. So given two vectors, x and y, uh, the sum is x plus y. It's a new vector, which we call x plus y. And again, what we do um, is we add uh, the components. So x1 plus y1, dot, 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 and then xn plus yn. Right, x n plus y n. Let's do a, a, a really quick um, example of just adding two vectors, just a practical example, um, so you see how that works. So say we have, um, let's see, 1, 3 plus 2, 4, right, 2, 4. So all you would do here is you do 1 plus 2 is, is 3, and 3 plus 4 is 7. So uh, very, very, very simple. So not, not difficult uh, at all. Not difficult at all. Um, two vectors are equal when their components are the same. So let's go ahead and define that. So definition. We kind of talked about that at the beginning, but let's just really formally define it. Um, if we're going to do linear algebra, we, we should do it right. So two vectors, say x. So x here, uh, again, it's the vector with these entries here. And then y here um, is this vector here. So these two vectors uh, in Rn, right, they're n-dimensional vectors, right, 
are equal if uh, the, all the components are the same. So xj is equal to yj, y sub j for j from 1 to n. So this is, you want to get used to this type of language. That's the main reason I did it uh, when you're watching these videos. Um, linear algebra is a, you know, is a rigorous math topic, so some of the more advanced definitions really require that you think about things like this. So we're saying that all the components are basically the same, right? But to write that mathematically, you would write it, um, you would write it like this. This goes both ways, right? So it's a definition. Um, so if this is true, then the vectors are equal. If the vectors are equal, then, then this is true. So even though it says if, it goes both ways. Remember, if means if and only if, and that implies it goes both ways. Here it says if, but the reason it goes both ways, the reason it's really an if, is it's because it's definition. Definitions always go both ways, even if they say if. Okay, so I uh, wanted to talk about that. Uh, let's do another example. So how could you even use vectors? What are they for? Here's an example of that. Let's say you have a system of equations. 3x minus y equals 2. And then 7x plus 4y equals 7. You can write this as a vector equation, right? You can write this as the vector 3x minus y. That would be the first entry. Then here's 7x uh, plus 4y. And this would be equal to um, 2, 7. So um, this equation, this system of equations, is equivalent um, to this vector equation. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to pick up with uh, some properties of vectors uh, in Rn. That's it.